Hello, everybody. I hope you all are having a magnificent day or a significant night, whichever it is for you. I just like to take a little time to teach you all how to redirect some of those old angry spirits from the past and to teach you all by birthright. We are all children of God and how to truly righteously read that book without it being a stumbling block. That book we call the Bible. I'm not too sure how the Quran is written, so I do not know if this will work for you all as well. But when dealing with the religion of the Bible, God's name is I am. He appeared to Moses and the other prophets as I am who I am. I am sent me. That is to be the name of the God of our forefathers. And that will be the name to be remembered throughout all generations. Now I'm saying that to say this. It is written that this would happen, but the Romans, the Grecians, and the Persians, and actually the Babylonians also, put names of gods there, the names of their gods of old. It is written in many different scriptures that men would go out, leave from the god of their forefathers and go after the gods of the world. If you all do proper research and look at the word and examine the word for what it truly is, the poems that it is, the poems that they are, if you put I am instead of the Lord God or Hashem or Allah or any of those names or even Jesus, and then put those poems in your heart, you will then become a God, so to speak. You will then have the spirit of a strong warrior. You will, even the Psalms, if you put the Psalms in your heart and then you guys put the spirit of God into your hearts, you will basically be, become one again. There will no longer be separation. A lot of people are putting gods in the sky creating physical lores, magic, and teachings, destroying themselves. What I'm telling you all is the discernment is righteously building your spirit the right way into a fortress or a temple. So also in the Bible, in the beginning, the serpent pretended to be God. He said, did I really say you can't eat of the tree of knowledge of good and evil? Because if God's name is I am and the serpent pretended to be God, that's how it will be edified. But you see, the church and different people struck the name Yahweh out of the scriptures. So then we couldn't ingest it righteously, putting the spirit back into the temple. So then we were relieved of our spirits, right? We lifted the spirit and then we put it in the sky, did we not? That's poetic. That's I'm trying to give this to you all in a way that you can understand the spirit truly and righteously. You see, I tried to explain to everybody the best I can what a spirit is or how true spirits affect the world. So when I say these things, I'm not talking about the magic realm or a magical afterlife. It is written over and over in Ecclesiastes, Proverbs, Psalms, and at many different places that nobody knows what happens when we die. One thing I like for people to understand is people are taking away from God's power. And I'll explain why. People will say, God is going to make an eternal punishment a cage that nobody can ever escape from. If God is, and if God is the most powerful being that creates all things, how can you say what God's punishment is going to be? If I remember correctly, hell was reserved for Satan and his angels. And even still, it is written that Satan will be in punishment. Because Satan is a spirit, the spirit of torment. And so that's philosophy for saying that you should keep Satan in the pit so that he never escapes and gives life to death because Satan is death. He is the liar, so to speak, spiritual death. So in a world where I'm living my everyday life, <laughs> if I actually put in the work to have eternal life, then I'm living happily and I'm living righteously and I'm living on the inside the way I know I can. But then when I give into misery, slavery, torment, sexual torment, racism, Satanism, all those things, you're giving life to death. You're actively with your free will destroying yourself. Because I will see people in this new age that don't believe that then say they're Satanists. With the words and the lines of code you're using, you're giving your brain and the chemicals in your body instruction to slowly destroy yourself. Because what people fail to realize is that you are in control you have the power so whatever you tell your mind body and soul to do it will subtly do i promise you it will over time the reason people say pray in the morning because you're giving your mind and your body instructions 
on how to live throughout the day, on what to do throughout the day, what type of feelings to express, what type of emotions to fight. But if you just wake up without any rules, barriers, or anything, you'll give yourself over to anything throughout the day, any spirit throughout the day. When I say spirit, like the spirit of hanging out with friends instead of the spirit of learning or having an education. Even when hanging out with the friends, the spirit of giving into everything they want versus being a strong pillar, a leader, somebody that suggests things versus that follows things. And then if they constantly ridicule you or put your ideas down, that means they're not your friends and you're sacrificing something that you know not to be right to fit in with people that you don't fit in with. I hope that plainly makes sense because us doing things that aren't of our will will cause us to punish ourselves later if we're not careful. What do I mean? You can follow along with friends and do something you know isn't right and then you go home and cry later maybe or feel bad or argue with yourself. For what? When you could have just did what was for you. So... When I say that, if you're destructive, that's where the sacrifice comes in, where you become a better person, where you change the lines of code in your heart. People will be like, people can't change. That's not even that's not even logical. People can't change. That's the most illogical thing I've ever heard in my life. There's constant change everywhere, slowly, day after day. So um, the Internet changes and that's not even a physical interaction, I guess. So, um I just want you all to understand plainly that love is out there. And when you put the right words into your spirit, the right words into your heart, when you learn from the right people, when you make the right, when you listen to certain elders and wise people with understanding, you then understand life better. Life can become more fruitful. It can become more balanced. It can become easier to deal with. A lot of people that are dealing with ailments if you tell a person they have a spiritual, physical, or psychological ailment that there's no cure for, they're going to slowly dwindle because they believe what you're telling them. When everything, when even if there isn't a cure for something, you're then affecting the spirit the way you're telling them. It's always good to leave hope out there and or help people understand the nature of reality. So whenever... Whenever people make God seem like a unmerciful, helpless God, and when I say that, I'm simply saying when you guys create torment and punishment instead of making God to be peace and love, what you're doing is you're mixing two kingdoms together. See, Satan's kingdom was supposed to be about torment and punishment. And so people are like, people fail to realize that everything exists for a reason. So even the person that's too empathetic that goes, oh, then why does the devil have to pay? You're not understanding the nature of the realms of anything. That's his kingdom. That's what he likes. That's what he wants to happen. And he wants people to come with him, so to speak. It's the spirit of something. So people are constantly like, people are constantly like, you're going to go to hell with the devil. And do, 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 do. First of all, first of all, everybody at some point in life is in hell about something. Okay, nobody lives a perfect 100% life. Jesus was in hell. He lived in hell. I promise you he did. So what I'm trying to get you all to understand is when you take that name Jesus away, you understand what those verses. So there's verses that say you are my only begotten son and I love you and all this other stuff. Well, if every individual person in the world put that in their heart, we all become children of God. You see how that works? But then the Roman and the Catholic churches and the Grecian Christian churches and the Persian Islamic churches put names there. God, Allah, Jesus, instead of us putting all those lines in our heart and following after what we would even image God to be. So I'm going to show you something. We constantly lift the ghost and don't realize, watch this. God's in the heart, heart, heart. Now lift the ghost. Oh, God, help, help. Please, please help. Where are you at? I need to find you. God, God, God. Uh, which one of these? God of this, the God of that, the God of this, the God of that couch. You see what I'm saying? We've lifted the ghost up already and don't realize it. And a lot of these philosophies and spiritual meanings of teachings have gone over our heads. And then people try to create physical magic out of it because they're confused. The author of confusion, which is the devil's torment. The kingdom, the king of this world, religion from this world. You see how it all intertwines together when you do it properly. But then 
the world does a lot of institutions that get money and are paid and it's us versus them and profit from people being sick, prison systems, churches that heal people and teach people that they need the church or God to survive, um, institutions of education that charge people way too much money, Bible school, Bible college. Like, man, I can't even take nothing with you on this journey except a staff and some clothes. Yet now we have Bible colleges that charge thousands of whatever dollars and all this stuff. Like, guys, I don't. So when you put the spirit in your heart. OK, so I'm getting up. I'm the temple, physical temple. Now let's go deeper inside of me that none of you all can see the spirit. Right. And any of this is possible because of the building blocks of the universe or whatever actually is building and doing things. I can't give that an image because I have no idea with my fleshly realm. The only thing I can do is live through the spirit. And so the spirit tells me to have a beautiful life, help others if I can, but to stay safe. Because this is not what that is. Not that sacrificial, hang me to a cross bullshit. The spirit tells me that I am and I'm a loving person and I need not be tormented or punished by mankind and their foolish ways and their plagues and everything else. That distraction is not from my head, and I have a choice in life to do what I want to do, which is to live happily, humbly, and peacefully. I see a lot of people mocking a God that the world created, and what I'm here to tell you is you don't have to live in mockery and destruction and all those things. You can find God for yourself and have a peaceful relationship on the inside, because first of all, his name is I am, which means he exists. Which means you don't need to worry about what his image is, but follow the words and put them in your heart. So a lot of people will be like, well, what about all those destructive and wicked and foolish people? Man, people have been programmed to be like that. The nature of humans is to do the right thing. I promise you it is. That's why it's hard to lie. That's why it's hard to ignore your inner voice. But a lot of people's inner voices have been poisoned by the fruits of this world, so to speak. You, like, like a lot of movies have like destruction and violence and murder in them. Which, okay, like, what I'm going to say is, it's one thing to be like a superhero movie or something. Like, I'm talking about, like, we, America, not in America, the world, the world, the world celebrates serial killers. I don't understand why they do it. All this Jeffrey Dahmer and, and John Wayne Gacy and J Church of Jim Jones and all that stuff. You guys are fascinated with death. It says plainly in the Bible, he who celebrates death does not know me or does not love me. Like, you guys... When I was an itty bitty kid and I finally was able to watch a movie from the world, I remember the first thing I remember is this woman got her head drowned in a fish tank because it was some gang, some killer movie or something. And that infuriated me. It made me angry. It made me snap. I wanted to break shit. I want to break shit now because of that movie. I don't understand why I'm like that. And that's why I like superhero movies when the superhero finally finds the bad guy or the serial killer and beats his brains in, but he's so good that he shows mercy and just sends him to jail and doesn't kill him. Like, that's the type of dude I am. I hate death and murder. And um, that's why I think I like video games and stuff like that, because it's a way to get out a lot of stress. Oh, another thing to combat Alzheimer's and different diseases and illnesses. Keep your mind sharp. Puzzle games, puzzles, crosswords. You know, it don't always got to be that. I played a game called RuneScape growing up. Some people call it Run Escape, but it's called RuneScape. They have runes in the game. And, and I'm not even going to. So. In RuneScape, I learned how to smelt. I learned about smelting, mining. I learned what made coal, iron, steel. I learned a lot of valuable traits in life through a video game because they made it interesting. And now they're coming out with the metaverse. That is super awesome, cool. A whole open world of learning and stuff. Dude, that is the coolest thing ever. But, you know, and also like a game I see now, Roblox. It's open worlds of stuff you're learning and interacting. That's what I did growing up playing video games. All this woke internet, Facebooking, showing your whole identity. This stuff is new, so I'm still getting used to all that. So, you know, it's, stay educated and stay learning. My parents, one thing I'll tell you, my parents didn't play with was education. We got educated and through the spirit and through physical education, we learned. And so I believe an educated person is more... Uh, can be more understanding and wise and learned and that way they can be prepared for things and understand things. Um, interesting fact that I learned back in school statistics, the more educated a country is, the less fatalities and the less deaths they deal with. So I thought that was interesting. So 
Um, like I was saying, put those poems from the Bible in your heart. Stay away from a lot of those punishments and stuff. And But then if you do go into the punishments, understand what they mean for yourself. Don't seek to go punish others. And if you see somebody doing something wrong, tell them from a real world physical standpoint because religion is for oneself. So if I am, if I see somebody doing something wrong, I'm going to go tell them, hey, you should, you should look both ways before crossing the street. I'm not going to say, hey, God told me to tell you. You see what I'm saying? Like that God, what happens for uh, with uh, what I am or who I am is for the inside and I let that be for me and then I go out into the world and try to be a light or a guide so when I see I'm telling y'all when I see scriptures that say I have the keys to heaven and hell I don't restrict that to Jesus Christ and only him that means that we each have a choice we each have the keys to heaven and hell now and we can make life hell or we can make life like heaven it's up to you. When I see scripture saying, I am the begotten son, I take that for me. And you all should too. We are begotten sons. And so we all have a journey and a life to live. We all have something to do. We all have purpose. We all have a beautiful world on the inside that sometimes isn't right to share with the world on the outside and or torment them with the world that's on our insides. But then we come together, sacrifice that and love each other and become merciful and understanding through unity and love and diversity. So anybody that talks about um, separating the kingdom of God and dividing the kingdom of God, first of all, sometimes things need to be divided. The Lord himself divided Nimrod's kingdom with the Tower of Babel. So, you know, Babylon, false religion, <laughs> they began babbling in their own speech, making up their own lies and lures and everything else. But I understand what that means. And that's for me. If you want it to mean something else magically, then... I guess you don't understand how there's 50,000 denominations of Christianity. There's even, y'all keep talking about Muslims and Islam is the way. There's two divisions of Islam and they fight horrendously. I've seen them. Oh my goodness. Yeah. And then y'all want to talk about Roman Catholics. They divide and split and have a million denominations. And so do Grecian Christians and so do Babylonians. I, Jews don't know whether to call my Shem, Jehovah, I am. I, I'm not even going to get into that. So. Everybody, you know, come together and let us be diverse in love. Because I don't want everybody to be saying that'd be super creepy, man. So, I love you all. Put those poems and beautiful rhymes in your heart. And remember, the words that you choose and accept are what builds you. So, if murder is murder and destruction is destruction, torment is torment and slavery is slavery. So is racism. It's all destruction. And those are the things that the Lord hate. The Lord loves peace, love, diversity, overcoming your fears overcoming the darkness, telling the truth, and just giving the light. <laughs> Stay beautiful, and look, don't be like my cat. She's being a Karen. LOL, just kidding. She's like, I I'm going to check out and see what all the neighbors are doing, and if they're not doing right, I'm going to tear your windows up. Hello, Aphrodite. She's a beauty. Up, oh, hello. Dracula, he's checking out the outsides. Hey, don't put me on camera, Pa. I'm sick of it. He says no pictures. <laughs> Stay beautiful and have a good day.